guess it's time for meal number one. Welcome to the vlog. No need to worry about doing it right. We are free and then we realize. Free and then we realize. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a brand new YouTube video, the first of its kind. A full day of eating. Today I will be showing you each and every meal. Today I'll be showing you each and every meal I eat, why I eat it, what's in that meal, and later on I'm taking you through a little bit of what I've been doing for my deadlift rehab, rehabbing my lower hip back injury over the last couple of weeks. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into meal one. We've got a big old pan heat in here, smaller pan heat in here. Cameraman was nice enough to chop up some onions, some peppers, and some jalapenos the other day. I'm about to dice up some ham here. And you guys have seen this before. It's a pretty typical breakfast for me. Eat my breakfast really low carb and high protein, moderate fat. I feel like I function mentally a whole lot better on that. And it allows the caffeine from my coffee to hit me a whole lot harder. And with not having a whole lot of movement, I'm able to use my carbs pre and post workout and then have a little bit more freedom with my diet. Yesterday, with some leftovers, I made this incredible, I'm talking IHOP level omelet, and uh, it inspired me to do it again today. So, here, on camera, yesterday I broke it, let's see if we can go ahead and um, not break this omelet today. Ooh, calls for the big spatula, here we go. She's a little thin, I'm already breaking it, but that's alright. Let's do, I broke it. Now let's try to scoot. Now here's the real important part, guys. Moment of truth. Oh. <sighs> it's so difficult because on the smaller pan, it tends to stick more. On the wider pan, it doesn't stick as much, but it's not level. Mm. It's okay. It's still going to be delicious. So we're going to let this cook, and I'll see you guys for breakfast, meal one. Will I be blurry? That is the question. The answer is no. So here we have breakfast meal number one. Two pretty halves of one shitty looking hole. So, I don't know what shitty looking hole sounded. So first thing I do in the morning, get a big old bottle of water. I let it chill in the fridge overnight because of the way our tap water is, for whatever reason, at room temperature doesn't taste the best. So, keep it cold overnight. First thing I do, I wake up, I chuck some water because overnight, you are not hydrated, so you're super dehydrated when you wake up. Chug as much water as you can, and then on top of that, if you're feeling like you're always hungry in the mornings, sometimes chugging a bunch of water can help stave off that hunger, but for me, I'm hungry regardless. So, meal number one, we've got two eggs, probably about a half a cup, maybe a full cup? I don't think it's a full cup. Two eggs, half a cup of egg whites, probably about one serving of black forest ham, some red peppers, some yellow peppers, some jalapeno peppers, and some onions with some sriracha on top and it's gonna be delicious, it's gonna be high protein, it's gonna be moderate fat, it's gonna be low carb. Let's go ahead and get a bite of Earthang here. Ooh, and some fat-free cheese because that is just straight protein. Oh my gosh, look at that steam, man, come on. That's an IHOP tier omelet. So, that's delicious. Macros on the screen somewhere right there. I've got a ton of work to do today, so we're gonna smash this and I will catch you guys meal number two, which is gonna be lunch. Oh my gosh, what a busy morning. <laughs> what a busy morning, holy cow. It's only 11.30, got a bit of a lull, so I'm gonna go and have my lunch right now. It's not crazy exciting, but I will show you guys what it is and why it is what it is after I heat it up. 
Okay, we've got lunch here. Lunch is simple. We've got a beef and rice meal, eight ounces of jasmine rice cooked in some beef stock, eight ounces of 93.7 beef with salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, nothing crazy. I like to keep a handful of my meals pretty simple. I do still prep even working from home. Yes, that gives me the freedom to shop a little bit more and create a little bit more and be more creative in the kitchen. But as much as I like to be creative in the kitchen, with a busy job like I have, it's difficult for me to spend an extra 30 to 45 minutes whipping stuff up in the kitchen. So I can do that in the evening, but during the day I have my meals prepped. I do that, you know, I prep once every two to three days just to keep it simple. Beef and rice, it tastes good. I know it's gonna hit my macros and help me with my fitness goals. And you can dress it up with fun sauces like this honey Dijon. And then you know we gotta have the homie G Hughes up in the house, some honey barbecue sauce. Just a little bit of that. I don't track my sauces because most of the ones that I use are super low calorie, like this G Hughes I think is 10 calories per two tablespoons. So if I end up using two servings, which is a hell of a lot of barbecue sauce, it's only 20 calories. And then same goes for this Honey Dijon mustard serving size is a little bit lower, but still only 10 calories per serving. So mix this up, mustard, barbecue sauce, and salty beef is delicious. You guys know I love salty meats and on top of that, I love adding some sweetness on top of that meat. So here is the first bite. Mm. I tell you, man, that Jehu's barbecue sauce. I'm talking to Cass. That, it works. It does its job. Anyway, we're gonna eat this, have a little bit of a brief lunch break, and then get back to work. Because this afternoon's gonna be just as busy, if not busier than this morning. Macros on the screen, photo beef and the rice meal, gonna be right there. And I will see you guys a little bit later for the pre-workout meal. Actually, in my fervor, and yes, I do know what that word means, and yes, I did use it organically, fact check me in my fervor to wolf down that beef and rice because I was so hungry, I almost forgot to share with you my supplements that I'm taking because of course in a full day of eating, a full day of consuming, I have to show you everything that I'm consuming and that includes my supplements. So first of all, we've got brain pills here, we've got a little full mega, two fish oil pills down the hatch. Delicious, keep your brain running healthy, keep those joints running smoothly. And we've got our, uh, Little uh, greens creatine mixture here, help with digestion, help with bloat, and 11 servings of fruits and greens. Again, down the H. Woo, nothing like freezing cold lawn clippings to wake you up. And then, ooh, I don't need water. We've got our happy pills, vitamin D, and then the infection prevention, vitamin C, with some water, thank you babe. And those are supplements you need to take if you want to be invincible to everything. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the lunch break, and I will see you guys at the pre-workout meal. What is up, party people? Afternoon is finished. Holy cow, what a busy afternoon. Back to filming myself. Cameraman is off at work. So, pre-workout meal just finished in the microwave. Nice and thick, just the way I like it. Half a serving of oats. It's going to be about 40 grams right there. About 30 grams of carbs. We're going to put some natural Jif peanut butter in there. And then, of course, you know... We gotta put some natural sweetener in there. Got some local honey from Martha'sville, gotta love it. Put that in there, then we're gonna put something else in there. Check this out. We've got some bloobs, some blubbery, about a handful of those bad boys in there. And we've got ourselves a nice high carb, moderate fat, low protein pre-workout meal. That's typically the way that I like to, I like to have my pre-workout meals is something higher carb and moderate in fat because the fat slows down the digestion of those carbohydrates, allowing me to train longer, endure more, and train harder for a longer period of time. So we're gonna smash this, let's sit for about an hour or so, and then I'll see you guys at the gym for some deadlifts and a killer back session. All right, made it, ooh, a little blurry here. Made it to the gym, beautiful day right now. A little warm for December for my liking, but still, an amazing day outside. So we're in the field house, I'm gonna warm up, stretch out, train some deadlifts, do some mobility before that though. I'll go ahead and run through my mobility routine, at least a portion of it, and kind of show you guys what I've been doing to rehab my hips and really open everything up so I can properly get a good deadlift and get good form in while I deadlift. So this is one of my favorite routines that I've been doing, called the 90-90. Call it that because you rotate your hips, both legs are in a 90 degree position. You kind of lean back in your hands here and you just rotate and rotate back and forth. And pretty much all of my hip mobility work will stem from this position. 
And just this feels really good, getting a good internal and external rotation on both hips here, both legs here. And I usually do anywhere between 10 and 20, get a good squeeze. And then I go back to my right side here. And you guys can't see, but I have my, my legs in that 90-90 position here. So my arm directly in line with my leg on the left side. So on the right side, I can lean forward. Not bend over, but I'll lean forward and get a really good stretch on that glute. I'll do the same thing here. And then kind of stretch out the inner parts of my hips here. And we're gonna move back into the 90-90. This is my favorite one. So we're 90-90, right? And then keeping the opposing knee down to the ground, we stretch the other hip out. Kind of roll up my foot here and squeeze my glutes to get a really good stretch in my hips. 10 on each side. If you have tight hips, this is by far, in my opinion, the best one. I get the most feeling out of this one, I should say. Just kind of roll over, do the same on the right side. If you're like me and you have poor mobility in the first place, and tight hips, tight hamstrings all the time, I'll go ahead and link the full routine down in my description box. I got it from a guy named the Bodyweight Warrior, Tim something or other, if I get his last name. Dude's a mobility genius, he's killer. But even just doing that workout, if you have poor hip mobility, hip flexion, and just overall tight hamstrings and bad hips in the first place, there's a good chance you're gonna feel um, pretty shitty doing that <laughs> the first time. I know that I did. So, we're gonna go ahead and kind of work some, work some more things out, throw 135 on the bar, and um, see what we can work up to comfortably. One thirty-five, feeling a thousand times better than it has um, in a long time. So I think the move is to go one eighty-five for a set or two, two twenty-five for a set or two, and I know I uh, deload singles should be right around three hundred to three fifteen, but with my injury flare-up, I'm guessing it's going to be around two seventy-five. But um, we'll just see how warm-ups go. Okay, at first I thought 275 moved like shit, but watch the video back and uh, move really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and say back downs are gonna be three sets, three sets of three to five reps at like 245, just to get some volume work in. Nothing too crazy. Sure, let's give it a shot. All things considered, deadlifts went exceptionally well. Really looking forward to seeing what I can pull before the end of the year um, for my squat bench deadlift max day. Anyway, on with the rest of the workout. <laughs> Oh man, 
what a workout that was. My back is fried, deadlifts felt really, really good for the first time in a long time. 275 for a smooth single, 245 for a three by three. And now we're back home cooking up some dinner. I've been in a little bit of a Mexican mood lately. So I'll go ahead and show you what I'm working with for dinner right now. Got the lo-fi hip hop playlist going. You know how that goes. So we've got chicken breasts diced up, rot her. We're gonna season that with some paprika. Uh, let's do some chili powder, just a dash. Some cumin. Cumin's like the best spice for Mexican food if you're about that life, which I am. And then we have got some salt. And then I'm gonna throw some regular pepper on there. This is all to taste, but I really enjoy some spicy food. And then we're gonna do just a dash, because chicken's low fat, just a dash of olive oil here. Get a nice sear on it. Then we're just gonna give this bad boy a stir. Be careful not to drop any of the breasts here. You know, you gotta handle your breasts with care. Wait for the sear. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna saute this chicken up. And then, I think I'm gonna make myself a chicken quesadilla. I'll go ahead and show you guys the finished product when dinner's ready. Quesadilla is finished, and man oh man, it looks incredible. We've got two regular mission flour tortillas, one whole chicken breast, and then, oh man, look how cheesy that is in there. Chicken breast, we got some red peppers and jalapenos and onions from breakfast this morning. Fat-free cheddar, fat-free mozz, look at that steam. And then, if you don't wanna kill your macros and you still want a dipping sauce for your quesadilla, plain Greek yogurt, salsa. It's the move, man. Let's go, here we go. First bite. Mm, that is gnarly good. Wow, I don't always like to get crazy creative in the kitchen, and this isn't even really all that creative, it's just I put a little extra work into my typical chicken and carb meal, and we've got ourselves a little fiesta going on here. Give another bite, look at that sauce, look at that man. That's just incredible. Macros on the screen, this entire meal, sauce included, right around the screen somewhere. This is amazing, so I'm gonna smash it very quickly hop in the shower, get some editing work done, and I will see you guys later on for the final meal. Oh, actually, real quick, before I move on, I did want to talk about my injury and my rehab and how I've been rehabbing it. I mentioned it a little bit at the gym earlier, talked about mobility work, but in all reality, man, at the end of the day, what it comes down to is time and patience and um, acceptance because I had plenty of deadlift and squat sessions where I thought to myself, I know I can lift more weight than this. I know I'm stronger than this, but I wasn't at the time. Old me would say, oh, I can lift more than this, so let's just do it and fight through the pain and work through it later. And that's not necessarily the way you should do it. You should be able to work around the pain and do something that's manageable and still be able to progress while rehabbing that pain in the interim. In the meantime, you have to understand that you're not gonna be 100%. I shouldn't say, oh, I can lift this much weight because that's what I do when I'm at 100% because I wasn't at 100% and I'm not at 100% right now. I'm getting much closer because I've rehabbed properly and with patience and accepted the fact that it's gonna take some time to get back to my 100% level of strength. At the end of the day, it really just does take time and you have to be patient and you have to check your ego at the door. There were days where I couldn't lift 135 pounds off the ground without feeling pain. So I just had to say, hey, no deadlifts today. Let's just focus on bodybuilding. Let's focus on weak points. Let's focus on building the spinal erectors and the glutes and the upper trap back area. There were just sessions that I had to give up on deadlifts and squats just because it didn't feel comfortable at the time. Now that I've done that, I've been able to grow weak points and get back to a point where squatting and deadlifting is comfortable. I'm doing it with, you know, somewhat relatively heavy weight, at least in terms of um, what I would consider heavy weight when I am at 100%. So um, really guys, if you have an injury, if you're rehabbing pain, if you are focusing on weak points or whatever, you're going through anything negative in your weightlifting or fitness journey, it takes time and patience. Yes, there is work that you can do, and there are things that you can do in the meantime to um, aid that process, kind of help things move along a little bit faster, more efficiently, but it really just takes time and patience. I can't say it enough. So with that, I'm gonna destroy this quesadilla, hop in the shower, do some editing, and I will see you guys at the final meal. Just finished up some editing, mainly Warzone, but uh, I don't know if you guys play Warzone at all, but it really gets my heart pumping, especially when we're in like the top 10. I think we finished second, sixth, second, and seventh, respectively. So an off night for the Squid Squad. But regardless, gonna wrap up food intake tonight with the final meal I've been doing lately, pretty much every night, I'm making a Remington James's protein brownie, but I've tweaked it a little bit and perfected it for myself, so I'm gonna run you through what I put in it right now. 
first and foremost that's gonna keep shape here is this sugar-free baking mix. This one right here is a cinnamon swirl bread and muffin mix, but then I've got some chocolate fudge, some yellow cake, and some devil's food. So sugar-free cake mix is the way to go. Just, you know, find it in the baking aisle in your local Walmart. So this one's fun because it has some like cinnamon crystals and regular flour. So I do like a half and half. So the recipe calls for 30 grams, so I'm gonna split it down the middle. 15 of this bad boy, 15 of the flour, right on the money. And then we're gonna do 15 grams, which is a serving. And if you guys wanna be sad, come here and check this out. If you wanna be sad, um, serving size is 15, this one's 14 grams, that's even worse, but we're gonna go 15. Actually, that's 18 grams, but how sad is that? That's over a serving. And then the secret ingredient, PE science, select protein. Get in the light here. The cake pop, it's delicious. It calls for 60 grams of a whey protein powder. The reason I like PE science so much is A, it tastes delicious, and B, it's a strong whey casein blend, so it's awesome for baking. 60 grams of that bad boy. Now the difference in, his, in Remington's recipe and my recipe is that he doesn't add any almond milk. I add, or well, this is cashew milk, but I add about 20 grams of a nut milk. I love myself a good milk to nut. And then I don't add what he does, which is PB2 powder. Because I find that A, I don't really need that protein, um, and B, it's a lot crispier without it. Yeah, it's fluffier, probably more voluminous with the PB2, but it's only about 32 grams, so it doesn't make a huge difference uh, in flavor or texture for me. Then we've got four grams of baking powder, help it rise and get real crispy. Then we've got four grams of some vanilla, and then it's five grams of any zero calorie sweetener. I've got some stevia here, about uh, five or six grams there. And then what makes this recipe so amazing, secret ingredient to any protein recipe, pure pumpkin for a half cup, it's only 45 calories and 10 carbs. 120 grams of pure canned pumpkin. It's the best. You don't taste the pumpkin at all, at least I don't, so I think that's gonna do her. Make sure you scrape the sides, that's my motto. That's what you should be working with right there. Very much like a cookie batter. Find yourself a nice non-stick pan, spray it down with zero calorie spray. Zero, 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 zero. And then, because it gotta look good, well, I was gonna say for the gram. We gotta look good for the YouTube clip. Just make it look all nice and even here as best you can. I'm hungry and impatient, so that's gonna have to do. And then you pop it in the oven right around 375, oh, about 12 minutes, and then all you gotta do is let it sit for three minutes afterward. I'm hoping I can do that because I'm eager and starving. Guaranteed it's gonna be delicious. See you guys in 12 minutes. If you're ready for it, which you're not, protein brownie. Look at it, man. Just look at it. It's delicious, and it's huge, and it's like 500 calories. What's even cooler than that, we got some fat and weird cookies left over from the holidays. And if you watched my last video, you would know that I'm on a bit of a diet break, so I'm just allowing myself to indulge a little bit more than normal. That is the exact consistency you want, right there. There's chocolate chips melted in there, the syrup on there. You guys, if you like cookies and chocolate, and you don't want to screw up your macros, this is the way to go. Macros on the screen for this right here. Just to give you guys a little bit of an insight, my training and my diet and how they kind of coincide. This week I decided to deload because I've really been putting my body through the ringer, barely know her, and I felt like I really needed it and I wanted to plan a squat, bench, deadlift, max out day before the end of the year as long as my hip was complying and so far it has been. In this deload week, I kind of decided to have my diet break last a little bit longer than originally planned because um, I, I used to think with a deload, decreasing your calories could help out um, aesthetically, but while that may be true, uh, to a certain extent, I would say that having your normal calorie intake is even more important on a deload, if not a higher calorie intake, because you're trying to prioritize recovery in a deload and prioritize um, getting back to your normal level of uh, functionality. So I'm okay with eating things like this during a diet break, especially when my calories are gonna be a little bit higher, especially when it's gonna help out with recovery. So I'm gonna stop babbling. We're gonna eat some fat and weird cookies. Huh. In the microwave, they're like fresh baked, man. It's, not, it's unreal. Oh my gosh, they're like sticky. I can't even. Woo! That's rich. We're gonna chat down, watch some Shameless. And that's gonna be the end of the video. Total macros for today, gonna be on the screen somewhere around there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Really appreciate it. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe. If you're not, share it with a friend, drop a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.